chapter 17, verse 7 through 16. That's right, Corey, right? That's right. All right, here we go. Here we go. And the Bible says, And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Let me say this real quick. This is the story about Elijah. Elijah had, had told King Ahab, it's going to not rain. It's going to be a drought in your land until I say otherwise. He said, there's be no rain in your country until God tell me to tell you that it's going to be rain. So he said, there will be no rain until I say otherwise. And so then God said, well, you need to go hide near the brook chair, right? And, and so when he's hiding down there, he was drinking of the water from the brook. He was also eating uh, uh, bread and, and meat that the ravens would bring to him, okay? And now the Bible says, and when it came to pass after a while, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Eight, verse 8 says, and the word of the Lord came unto him, came unto Elijah, and said, Arise, get thee to Zarephath which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the woman, widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch the water that he just told her to go get, he called her again and he said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, as the Lord God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks. Somebody say two sticks. She said, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. Verse 13, and Elijah said to her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first and bring it, in, it unto me. And after, make for, your, make for thee and for thy son. Okay, make for me, then go make for thee and thy son. Verse 14 says, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail. Until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. Verse 16. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail. According to the word of the Lord which was spake by Elijah. Hmm. Verse 13, he said, he said, but make me thereof a little cake first. Give me mine first. And then after, make for you and your son. Today, our simple subject is this, the power of proper priorities. The power, say that with me, the power of of proper priorities. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word. Open our ears to hear. Open our hearts to receive. Let our lives be a true reflection of the things you would have for us to do in the order, in the way that you would have us to do it. Lord, I thank you for priorities. I thank you most of all for proper priority. So Lord, I simply say this. Have your way in this service. Move as you want to move. Touch as you want to touch. Heal, deliver as you want to do so. But right now, Lord God, I'm asking you to word my mouth. Give me what to say, how to say, and when to say it, Lord God. And as I always pray, I pray for me. Don't let me waste their time. In the name of Jesus, we receive this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Say it one more time. The power of proper priorities. Now, wipe the spit off the back of your neighbor's neck. You just spit all over when you said that. But have your seat. Go ahead and have your seat. <laughs> the power of proper priorities. <laughs> Something like a beat by poots. Hey, 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 I saw you die. All he had to do two beats and you was on it. All right. Anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> hey, it's not going like this. Uh, so, so anyway, um, 
we're going to get it right into this because we got we to move. In our text, uh, we find that the prophet Elijah had been sitting by the brook at Cherith where God had been nourishing him, okay? Uh, and he has been drinking water from the brook. Well, one day that we just read, one day the brook dries up because there had been no rain due to the drought in the land. OK, so so uh, God's command, uh, uh, Elijah, then to go to Zarephath. He said, you need to go to Zarephath and hide out a little bit. Go to Zarephath and, and, and hide out. And so Elijah goes to Zarephath and, 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 and excuse me, he goes out to the brook chair if he hides out. Then God says, now I want you to go to Zarephath and I got a widow there who's going to provide sustenance. Sustenance is your, your food, your nourishment, everything you need. He said, you're going to go there. She's going to give you everything that you need now. Now. If I was any kind of preacher, right, I would hover right there for a little while, uh, but I know I'm going to rush for time. But I would hover there if I was any kind of preacher just to say simply this, uh, to remind you that when one door closes, God will always open another door. If I was any kind of preacher, I would, I would hover right there just to let you know that. The brook dried up, but God said, I'll open another door for you in Zarephath, so you need to get there. Hmm, I want to hover there, but I can't do it because I got to keep moving. Because if I was any kind of preacher, I would also say this. I would tell you that faithful obedience to God always leads to the blessings of God. Mm-hmm. I want to hover, but I'm going to keep on moving. Somebody say, God will provide. So, so, so Elijah does just as God had instructed him to do, and he goes to Zarephath, and he re- uh, arrives at the gates of the city, and when he gets there, he sees this woman, this, this plain, ordinary woman picking up sticks. Now, I can imagine that she didn't look like anything that he pictured in his mind to be the one that was going to provide for him. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. This woman, she looks like she's in need herself. This woman looks hungry herself. This woman looks like she's famished herself. This woman looks as though she doesn't have enough for herself, let alone for the prophet of God. I'm not just making assumptions there. She said, we're about to eat and die. That means you at the point of starvation. Your, your body has devoured all the extra fat you had on it, and therefore you're about to die. That means, so, so I want you to see this woman, this woman with her skinny little arms, and, and, and this woman with the bony little legs, and, and this woman with her trembling knees. I mean, she couldn't possibly be the answer to his need. Not, not her. She couldn't possibly be the answer to his need and, and to his drought. But how many of y'all know that miracles are made out of need? Miracles are na- made out of need. If there's, no, if there's not a need to challenge you, there will be not, not be a word to stir you. That, that bypassed a lot of y'all, so I'm going to say it again. If there's no need to challenge you, there is no word to stir you. Now, say that because I don't tell people, I, I make it a habit of mine. I say, don't ever go to God and ask God to increase your faith. Right. I know people say, oh, God increase. No, 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 no. Listen to Corey. Listen to Corey. Listen to young Corey. Listen, don't, you, don't you go to God asking God to increase your faith. You better work on that thing all by yourself. Don't ask God to increase your faith because if God is the one that's going to be building your faith, he's going to stir your need. He's going to stir your need. He'll stir you and challenge you in areas of your life that you wouldn't necessarily be prepared for spiritually to go. God, increase my faith. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. We're going to let you suffer for a little bit to increase your faith. Mm -hmm. We're going to let you lose everything in your house before you increase your faith. We're going to let everybody around you die and then see how good your faith. You want to increase your faith. I'm telling y'all right now, do it by yourself. Don't go asking God to increase your faith because you will never find out what you got in you spiritually until you have been challenged beyond what you can see and do physically. Y'all know the saying. The saying says, as a man's extremities is God's opportunity. What does that mean? That means that when a person has tried everything in their power and yet stands helpless, this is when God can show up and show out. Mm -hmm. I tell God, I'm trying to increase my faith, God. I don't need your help, though. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'll start with this headache first. And I'll do what I do, to, okay? I'll work it on myself. I'll work it on, I don't need you to help push me to increase my faith, all right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. So, so anyway, so anyway, Elijah meets this woman, and he said, hey, yeah, hey, hey, sister girl, I'm thirsty. 
Uh, I pray thee that you can go and get some little uh, something, little drink from this is a little something, something. This is a little something to drink. And, and without hesitation, she leaves right to go get the prophet some water. And before she can even get out of his sight, he stops her again. But this time, he asked her to bring him a morsel of bread in her hand. Can I have just a little cake? Can I have just a little muffin? How about some cornbread? Do you got something that I can eat? This, I just want a little bit. I want, I want a little. I don't want a big pit bit. I want a little bit. So do you got a little something that I can have? Now, now what's happening is he is beginning to challenge her limitations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's beginning to challenge her limitations because she speaks up and says, well, to tell you the truth, I can't do that. I would really like to, but I, I can't do that. I would like to, but I don't know if you've been paying attention to the weather here lately, uh, but we're in the middle of a drought. See, see, if you don't know what a drought means, a drought means that the thing that you depended on, the thing that you counted on, is now gone. Mm-hmm. He, he, she, says, she says, I'm trying to raise this little boy all by myself, and, and it's hard out here in these streets, pre- preacher. And, and, and as a matter of fact, right before you came over, I was gathering two sticks. Somebody say two sticks. She said, right before you came, I was gathering two sticks. Somebody say two sticks. Now, now you know things are serious when you're counting the amount of sticks that you have. It's tight. It's tight. Nah, nah. Oh, come on, come on, come on. That, that, that scripture's not there on accident. He says she's gathering. She's gathering. She says she's gathering two sticks. That means that she's gathering just enough to create a fire for her and her son to eat their final meal. Hmm. What she's saying is that I fought as long as I could fight. I'm down to my last two sticks, and I got a handful of meal and a little bit of oil, and I'm going to mix it together to make a little bit of bread, and we're going to eat a little something, and then we're going to die. Did you catch that? She said, I'm going to go get this, and then we're going to eat, and we're going to die. Yeah, yeah, okay, let me say it again. She said, she said I'm going to put this together, and then we're going to eat, and then me and my child, we both going to die. A couple weeks ago, um, quick note, a couple weeks ago, I was talking about uh, generational curses. Uh, in short, we inherit many traits and preferences from our parents that aren't always a positive influence on our lives or on others. So, so when we acquire habits or beliefs that negatively affect our lives or those of us are around us, this is known as a generational curse. Uh huh. And if you're not careful, you will pass what you have got to the next level that comes after you. We're going to keep talking about it for just a second. So, so, so the negative patterns of this living style, this style of living, I'm telling you right now, it needs to be broken. If you have a negativity that was passed to you from great mama down to daddy down to, down to you, you need to stop it before it goes to the next generation if it is a negative thing. Uh Now, now I brought that up because I want you to notice here in this text that poverty is generational. Uh Did I lose y'all? In in this text, poverty is generational. It's a culture. It has its own mentality. Uh When you think about it, poverty has not as much to do about not having money as it do about having the right mindset. Okay, okay, okay. You you, you see, see, poverty, once you get that poverty mentality... You're poor and always going to be poor mentality. When, when you get that, money won't bring you out because your mind will always rob you of the opportunity that money gave you. I said too many words. Let's put it how they used to say it. Uh, you can take the man out the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto out the man. You, you got to change your mentality. It's a mindset that you must break the culture of it. Uh-huh. It's the way that you think. It's the way that you go about your daily business. It's the way that you see your own work. You got to learn. Uh, a, you can learn a little something by hanging around people who are prosperous in all their ways. I got people I know I can say, hey, they are real millionaires. And I just want, I just want to sit in the room and see how you handle stuff. Now, if you want to tear me off a little something, that's cool too. But I want to see how you, <laughs> how you handle stuff, right? right? You, 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 can, you can glean from conversations with people that you wouldn't normally hear from when you get outside your neighborhood, 
You, you, you can get away with processing problems that you wouldn't normally get when your parents' solution, check this out, when your parents' solution for not having enough money or getting the utilities cut off, their choice is to, to pay the baby's bills and put the bill in the baby's name. I don't have enough money. My credit's jacked up. So my mentality is I'm going to put all my bills in my baby's name. Uh-huh. And he's two years old. That's a mindset. People with pro- prosperity mindset, that's not even an option. That's not even an option. When you got prosperity in mind, I'm not going to jack up my kids before they even know who they are. See, see, parents today, oh, I'm just beyond this is survival. See, daddy knew how to survive. You call it survival, but downtown they call it bad credit. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So little JoJo wearing pampers with a light bill, gas bill, cable bill, and a Netflix account. He can't even get free lunch at school because he's getting debt. But we got this get by culture and we got to break it. So Elijah says, he said, he asked for a morsel of bread and she responds, uh, I would, but my situation, my starvation has affected me and my child. Poverty is generational. It's a mindset. It's a culture that must be broken because when all you feed your kids is what you eat, they're going to only think like you think and have what you have. My dad, he said, they used to take us on trips and different things, and we used to have vacation at grandma's house down in Tennessee. <laughs> but, but don't get me wrong, we would go to places like Cedar Point, we would go to places like Walt Disney World and that kind of stuff, so he would get us out and every now and then do some stuff. When I had kids, we took our kids everywhere, because we want them to be exposed to things and see that the world is bigger than the 15 minutes you go across Jackson. Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, anyway, uh, so, so, so here she says, it's a drought going on, and all I got left is this. I already know what I have is not enough. I know it will not sustain us, so we're going to eat and die. Now, this is where you would think that the man, the man of God would step in with the wind blowing in the wind and the light from heaven shining on his face, you expect him to step in and say, Thus says the Lord thy God, you shall live and not die. That, that's what you should think would happen. The woman just told you that's supposed to supply your need that she's about to eat and die. You would thought he was going to step in and say, Hey, you're not going to die. Don't worry about it. That's not what he said. And then he... Say, you're not going to die. And then you think the church going to bust out in the hallelujah dance and everybody, whoa, she's not going to die. Whoa, she's not going to die. <laughs> but that's not what he said. She said, we're going to eat and then we're going to die. And he says, right, 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 right. Okay, okay. Well, go make yourself a little lunch, but, but give me my little cake first. Is that what he said? He, she said, we're going to eat and we're going to die. He said, right, right, right. Yeah, that's yeah, all good. That's all good. Yeah, but make that little lunch for yourself. But give me mine first. Because if you're dead, you can't make it for me. I need you to go give me mine. You need to give me mine first. I need all the mothers in the room just to raise your hand. Mothers, raise your hand in the room. Oh, okay, you put them down. Could you imagine telling someone who is supposed to care about you that you're going to eat and die, and they say, okay, go ahead and die, but give me mine first. Before you die. You, 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 you be like, you must be out of your mind. Did you hear what you just said to me? Did you not hear what I just told you? I said, we're going to eat and die. And you said, go, go ahead, but make it and give me yours first. You want yours first? But think about this for a second, y'all. Eating is about living. Eating is about living. But she says, we're going to eat and die. And Elijah doesn't help matters at all. 
As a matter of fact, he puts a demand on her faith. What do you do when your back is up against the wall? What do you do when you have nowhere else to turn? What do you do when your faith has been pushed to the limit? What do you do when God doesn't make sense? I'm going to eat and die. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But make mine first. I could put her in the modern times. She was hungry. She was, she was probably shaking because she was famished. We're going to eat and we're going to die. Yeah, 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 yeah. Make mine first. <laughs> I got these two sticks. I'm going to pop up. <laughs> but, but let's get into this for real. What's being, you see here, what's being tested in this woman was her respect for the word of the Lord. What, what's being tested in this woman is, do you esteem your need over God's want? See, the flesh says, forget you and the horse you rode in on. The, the, the flesh said, I'm not thinking about you. The flesh says, this is it. This is all that I have. The flesh says, I'm going to bake this cake, eat it, and die. The flesh says, man, get out of here. Huh. But the spiritual mind says, what I have is not enough anyway. Mm -hmm. Why should I be stingy when it's not enough anyway? The spirit says, I'm hungry, the kid is hungry, the prophet is hungry, and this little bit won't fix it. So even if I don't survive, I want it to be said of me that she put God first. Mm -hmm. Now we get into the power of the text. Now we get into the power of the text. See, she didn't feed herself and her son first and then give to Elijah what she may have had left. That's not the way she did it, uh uh. Because if she had done it that way, she would have never uh, got her miracle. Mm -hmm. So the question came to me the other day about tithing. And some people live on the principle of tithing. Some people say they're not going to tithe and say, I'm just going to give a great amount. And some people say, I want to tithe. And so they asked me about tithing. They say, Are you supposed to tithe off your gross, or out of, which is your total income, or out of your net, which is your take home amount? If you are one who chooses to uh, live by the principle of tithing, I'm telling you, first of all, it's a marvelous principle to live by, but, 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 but if you are one who choose to work off the principles of tithing, uh, my understanding is that it should be off the gross because anything other than that will only be a percentage after everybody else has taken what they want and now you're giving God a, of what you have left. That wouldn't be putting God first. Okay, okay, so, so just like in this story, it's not that she just gave to the prophet, it's that she gave to the prophet first. Mm-hmm. And that's what unlocked the miracle in her life. It's about priority. God wants your first fruits. He don't want your scraps and your leftovers. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Y'all know what it says. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. It's not that you just, she was just seeking, it's not just about we seeking God. No, it's seeking God first. God doesn't like it when you seek him only after you have made a mess out of everything. God don't like it when you seek him only after you have followed everybody else's advice. God don't like it when you seek him only after you have lost your house, after you have lost the, the cat, and, and after you have lost your car, and after the dog has ran away, and after you lost your business, and, and after uh, uh, you've down on your deathbed. God said, don't come seeking me now. He said, seek me first. God says, I'm not in the business of being sought last. I want you to seek me first and come to me first. Why? Because God wants to be the priority in your life. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Not an afterthought, after you've done it your way. Okay, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, the first commandment instructs us, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That means ahead of me. That means in front of me. Thou shalt have no gods in the place at all. But we have made gods out of everything around us. We have made gods out of our spouses, out of our kids, out of our jobs, out of our houses, out of our cars, out of our entertainment, out of our health issues, out of our relationships, out of our time. But God says, thou shalt have, shalt, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him alone shalt thou serve. Tell, tell somebody, put God first. So, Elijah says to this woman, fear not. Hmm. Too late. Go 
98% of the time in the Bible, when you see somebody say, fear not, it's too late. <laughs> Remember the angel came up to Mary, fear not. <laughs> anyway, anyway, he says, fear not, check this out, but make me a little cake first and then for you and your son. Here we go. Here's the revelation. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall your cruise of oil fail. Did you catch that? He didn't ask for it all. He wanted just a, just a portion first. He said, bring me a portion first. And if she obeyed, he says, as God is my witness, I promise you that you won't run out. Mm. Somebody say just enough. He said, you, you're not going to run out. You're going to have just, just, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I know in church we get real spiritual, you know, the abundance, the overflow, the, ooh, God going to enlarge my territory. Ooh, God going to do this, and he going to pour it. Ooh, glory be to God, hallelujah. But I want to talk to some people that don't necessarily have the exceedingly abundantly, above all that you can ask for kind of blessing in your life. But you have that just enough where you don't run out in your life. Some of y'all not celebrating having just enough. Doc, I thank God for just enough. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. J just enough. Work with me, somebody. Uh, you don't have enough that you can go brag about it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, you don't, you don't have enough where you can start looking down on people. Come on now. You, you don't have enough where you can start acting all stuck up and sedity. Come on now. You, you don't have enough where you can start acting funny. You don't have enough where you can start skipping work. You don't have enough, come on now, where you can say, my cup is running over. But every time you have a need of something, you find that you have just enough. I had just enough for years and, and just enough for days and just enough for months. Every time I went to the barrel, I had just enough. Somehow, some way, when I get down to my last, I look down and say, oh, I got just enough to make another one. Somebody shout, just enough. See, see, it don't come the easy way. It don't come easy, Brother Gina. It don't come easy. I got just enough. It don't come easy. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I, I still got to go to work in the morning. But if you're not careful, if you're not careful, hear me, those just enough people, if you're not careful, you may get twisted thinking and actually think that it's of your own doing that you have what you have. But I'm here to make sure that you understand it's not about you, baby. It's all about God's grace. Oh, some of y'all don't understand God's grace. Oh, oh, come on, come on. See, see, you think that if I'm under God's grace, that I should have the more than enough at all times kind of blessing. Hmm. <laughs> but God says, if you don't get what you want when you want it, if you don't get it the way that you want it, he says, check this out. He said, my grace is sufficient. Woo! Somebody said, my grace. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. Oh, my goodness. See, see, some people actually have the nerve to curse the just enough that they do have as though it's not enough. You better stop comparing your blessings to other people's blessings. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. You out here comparing what you got to somebody else, and you say, well, I need more. Well, you better thank God for what you got. I want a bigger car. I want a bigger house. I want a bigger yard. I want bigger this, that, and other. Okay, you're going to have bigger bills and bigger debt and big... And until God wipe it out, you're going to have that. So I don't curse the just enough that God gave me as though it's not enough. But God would have me to tell you today that before he completely opens up the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing, he wants to see if you're grateful, if you're truly grateful for the just enough that he has allowed you to have that you didn't run out of. I wish I had four, four, there we go, four grateful people in the room today. Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So, so Elijah knew that God was going to provide, so he didn't hesitate to ask for the first cake. 
<sighs> there are too many people in this today's society that would have told old man Elijah, no. No. I'm practicing my new ministry of no. You're not taking my last little bit, okay? See, see, that attitude today is it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. I won't give it away. And a lot of Christians only give God their leftover time and their spare change uh, and the last few minutes of their day if they give God anything at all. We give God the leftovers of our life, and then we wonder why our lives are lacking so much in so many ways. Woo. See, see, that part of your life that belongs to God must be given first to become the seed from which your faith and provision will grow. Did I tell y'all that there's power, the power of proper priorities? Hmm. There's this power in the prop of, of power of proper priorities. You, when you put God first, there's power when you think, put things in the proper order. Okay, I'm just going to ask a quick poll, quick poll, quick poll, quick poll, quick poll. Uh, Thanksgiving is usually known as Turkey Day. How many are really planning on cooking a turkey for Thanksgiving? This, this, this way, man. This is good. Okay, okay, okay. That's fine. That's fine. I'm not going to mess with you too much. Um, so, so. Uh, you're quite sure you got a recipe that you, you, you hook your turkey up with. You know, Julie had me inject our turkey. Well, it'd be swole, you know, just, just swole. And, 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 and it, it'd be all big, walking around like, yeah, dog, you know. And, and it'd be, it would be all swollen up. But there's a, proper, there's a proper way that you fulfill the recipe, right? Um, so, so what's the first thing you need to do? What you say, girl? First thing you got to do is get the turkey. <laughs> the power of proper priorities. Ooh, I'm going to inject that turkey. You ain't got it. If you deep fry and you got the, the peanut or you got the oil all ready to deep fry and everything all set, then you look around like. The power in proper, of proper priorities. Let me mess with your mind just for a little bit and we can go home. Um, no, no, sir, I can't take my time. Uh, they, they already shut me off. They're like, Corey, it's one o'clock. And you want to be in church in three hours. So let me, let me, let me finish this one, bro. I, pre I appreciate the sentiment, though. I know what you're trying to say. you saying you enjoy what I'm saying. That's what you're saying, right? you receiving the word that's coming for. See, see, if more people believe that, they would say it out loud. But their priority is getting home and getting some food. <laughs> I'm messing with y'all today. No, I ain't. No, I ain't. No, I ain't. So let me mess your mind real quick. The Bible says that she had went and got two sticks. Somebody say two sticks. Two, two sticks, two sticks. We got some great cooks in this church. Uh, I know we do. And, and believe it or not, I cook, and I cook, I don't cook often at all. Julie lay it out for me, or we going out the edge. I don't cook often at all, but I can cook, and I do know how to cook. I can grill, and I can actually enjoy baking. I love baking stuff. I usually do it during this time of season. I bake, I bake cakes, and I bake pies, and, and I even made, I'll tell you, one of my dishes I really love, that I really love, I made my own homemade spinach artichoke cheese dip. Man, it was on point. It was on point. But I found out it was cheaper for me to go get it from a Red Lobster. Anyway... <laughs> After you buy all the ingredients, man, that's of course. Have y'all made a pecan pie lately? Oh my goodness. Anyway, 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 anyway. So, 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 so when, what I'm saying is that when I turn on the oven to 350 degrees or whatever the recipe calls for the oven to be cooked at, it generally comes out the way that I want it because the oven is properly heated for the right amount of time. Y'all with, with me? So, so here's what I'm getting to. Um, if she only had two sticks, as the Bible says, not two logs. Not two branches. The Bible says she had two sticks. I, I, I dare say this. I, I, I didn't read this, but I dare say this. If she only had two sticks that the Bible said that she had, that cake she was about to make, I, I don't think it was going to get all the way done. <laughs> I 
I have burned sticks before, Derek. I have burned sticks before. Right? And, 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 they, and they burn typically fast. And they don't heat up that much. Hmm. And they don't last long. And they don't get hot. So, so, so I really don't think the two sticks were going to bring the temp up to 350 degrees to cook the cake that she thought she was going to cook through and through. So she had to have known, Brother Harry, that her and her son's last meal was going to be a half-cooked cake. They weren't going to eat it. They was going to drink it. <laughs> anyway, so, so picture this. Picture this. She goes into the house. She puts those two sticks in the oven. Light them up. And then she goes to her barrel of meal and scrapes the very last of the meal. And then she goes to her vessel of oil and she pours out the very last of the oil, and whatever she does, she mixes everything together, and lo and behold, that oven done got hot. And them two sticks are still burning. She probably said, what in the world? But she said, okay, okay, okay. Uh, she puts her little cake in her little pan, whatever she's going to put it in, and she slides it into the oven, oven, and then she come back 15 minutes later, and, and expecting to find nothing but ashes at the bottom of the oven, hmm. but mm -mm. them two sticks are still burning. Y'all gonna get this in a second. So she said, okay, I'm gonna let it do what it do then. And she goes and goes out and says, I'm gonna come back in 30 minutes to see how this cake really turned out. But she really began to hurt that when she said, I'm really gonna be giving this man, this man a half-baked cake. Uh -huh. uh, but when she get back to the oven, lo and behold, them two sticks are still burning and giving off heat. And the cake is ready. So she takes that little cake out the oven and she walks it over to the man of God and gives him the little cake. And then Elijah says, uh, uh, now, he said, now go make one for you and your son. And she's like, man, you don't even understand. I gave you the last that I had. But somewhere between her going to Elijah and her on her way back, the angel of the Lord went and refilled the barrel with just enough meal and just the vessel of oil with just enough for another cake and her son. So when she walks over to the barrel and she said, wait a minute, good Lord, I thought I had scraped the bottom of this barrel and I thought I had poured the last little bit of this oil. But look, I have just enough to make another cake. And then she looked into that oven and guess what? Them two sticks are still burning. And giving off heat. Y'all going to knock me? Okay, okay. You see, see it's, it doesn't matter how many times she went back to that barrel or how many times she went back to that vessel of oil. They never ran out because uh, the meal and the oil were refilled just enough to make what you need for the day at hand. Come on now. Uh, so, so if little Junior wanted to have a pancake between breakfast and lunch, she had just enough meal and just enough oil to cook it. If little Junior wanted a midnight snack uh, and, and she would go and prepare because she had just enough meal and just enough oil to do it. She had enough. She never ran out. But when she looked around her neighborhood and saw all those people who didn't trust God, uh -huh, that they were struggling and that they were getting thinner and having funerals because they were dying from hunger, her and little Junior were living because she obeyed the word of the Lord. So because she was willing to obey God and give God his first fruits of her labor the, to, to God, she and her son were able to survive long after the drought had finished. Y'all not going to hear what I'm saying? So God provided all that she needed. The oil would refill and the grain would multiply for every meal. I keep hearing you, God. God said, do y'all remember when the children of Israel were going through the desert? And he said, only take enough for what you need today. He said, give me my daily bread. He said, only take what you need for now. He said, I got you for tomorrow. He said, give me my daily bread. When they Remember when they tried to go store up for extra days? It all rotted and worms and everything. And God said, no, 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 no. My deal with you is that I'm going to give you just enough to survive during this time and during this season. And I'm here to tell you that God's power to provide for our needs is not limited by what we see. It's only limited by what we believe. And by our obedience and faith that we put in him. And I'm done, y'all. Stand to your feet because I got to go preach another sermon. But I want to let you know that God can turn things around. I don't care what you're facing in your life. God can turn things around. Tell your neighbor, God can turn things around. God can turn things around.
Uh huh. Uh huh. A little money becomes a lot uh, when you put your trust in God. A little joy becomes much when you put your trust in God. A little hope becomes much when you put your trust in God. A little love becomes much when you put your trust in God. A little faith becomes much when you put your trust in God. A little strength becomes much when you put your trust in God. Burdens become blessings when you put your trust in God. Sinners become saints when you put your trust in God. Gloom becomes grace when you put your trust in God. That God will turn that thing around. Only if you believe it. Only if you receive it. I want the people of God to open up your mouth and give God praise. Hey! Hallelujah. God can and God will because there's power in proper perspectives. Huh. Hmm. Power in proper perspectives. Power. God can fix everything. But you got to put God first. I heard a preacher say this, and I love how he said it. We ought to take that scripture that I quoted, um, Matthew 6, 33. If you seek God first, his kingdom, that means his sovereignty, his realm, and all his righteousness. He said, if you seek that first, he said, all these things. He said, don't, don't get it twisted. In context, that scripture was talking about your things that you need in life. Your raiment, your food, your sustenance, your things that you need to survive. What we have done, we come to God because we're trying to get a hookup. God said, I ain't going to promise you a hookup. He said, I promise you just enough to survive to the next day. Put God first. And when you do that, you got to trust him. Do you trust God? Hmm. Man. We got to go. But the priority is to make sure everybody in this room know who Jesus is. What's that lyric say that song? You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I never I heard this. I heard this. That's me. That's me. That's me. We say we never gonna turn back. I heard the songster said, but I didn't know that never was such a short period of time. Never mean never, never ever, never ever, never. I never happens to until, until there's a better offer. But I want to pray God, pray to God for you and with you, that God, we are in, in right standing with you. Seek ye the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's his sovereignty. That means his reign. That means that I'm seeking for you to be the one that reigns in my life. How do we do that? We turn our lives over to him with this simple prayer. It's simple words out of my mouth. But if you mean this from the depths of your heart, do you not know that he hears you? So let's do this together, family. Let's do this together. Father, forgive me. For I have sinned. I need you to save me. I need to be saved today. So I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. I believe in my heart that he died on the cross for me. I say, I also believe that they put him in a borrowed tomb just for me. But I also believe that he got up on the third day with all power in his hands. 
that I might be saved. Woo! Say, just for me? He did it for me. And Uncle Julian says he did that. You know what? You know what? Say this for me. Say, I am saved. Say it like you believe. Say, I decree and I declare that I am saved. Say it again. Say, I am saved. Say it like you believe it. Say, I am saved. Now, only if you believe it, I want you to put those hands together, open up your mouth, and let the world know. Let the world know.